care, anxiety, pressure is coming, we have to recognize the source of that. And you know what? It's not the people. The source is not people around you. So even if people are being used to put pressure or to put ex place expectations on us, the people are not the source of the pressure. Isn't that right? Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see. So we don't get mad at the people. They're not our enemy. Who's the enemy? Who's the adversary that's walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? The devil. That turkey. <laughs> and he is the source. He's the source of pressure. So isn't that glorious? Love never fails. We can love people. This is how Jesus could love people that were putting him on the cross. And I believe he did. I believe he loved them with the love of God that never fails. I believe he saw the best in them and knew there's an enemy and they're blinded to that. But he forgave them and he knew they don't know what they're doing. We can know that too. These people don't know what they're doing, but that's okay. We have one job and that's to be led by love. Amen. Say that out loud. I am led, I am led by, love. by love. Love leads me. Love leads and, me. I and I follow. I'm a yielder, I'm a yielder and not a resistor, not a resistor to, the things of God. to the things of God. I resist the devil, I resist and, the devil and, he flees. and he flees because I'm submitted to my Father. I am submitted to love. Amen. Amen. Now this is just a real stirring in freedom for you. That's what it's about. It's about freedom, being free. And I just hope it, it confirms, I believe that it's confirming things in me. I know it's a help for me even to get to stir someone else up about it. But this is, this is huge in this life. This is kind of like faith in God 101, you know? These are the, the elementary things that sometimes, even as you've gone along and grown in the Lord, you can get away from if you're not reminded. And Peter said, I'm gonna, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'm gonna stir you up by putting you in remembrance of these things. So keep each other stirred up. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's all I have. You have one more thing? Oh yeah. She was reminding me. She said, What did Max say that you say to me all the time? <laughs> say one time when he was ministering and I'm sure he said it lots of times but he said that good works are anything motivated by the heart of a believer and God God created us in Christ Jesus he's working on us Ephesians 2 said 2 10 said that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what good works that God planned beforehand that we should walk in them we should walk in them what does that mean again? We can. We're empowered to. Not we're supposed to and you better keep trying. No, no, no. We can. God planned it beforehand. I like what the Amplified said there. It said we're made anew that we might do. And that's how it works. So bring forth those good works. Amen. Hallelujah. Anything else? Honey, you got anything? <laughs> Do it, please do. It. No, no. Hallelujah. Well, I'm I'm stirred up just for what they shared and just got back from Norway and um, one of the things that the Lord has shown me while I was there was where we're seated. We're seated in Christ. There is no better seat to be seated in than in Christ at the right hand of God. If there was, God would have placed us there with Jesus. And when I started understanding that position that God gave us is something that the enemy absolutely hates. Not only that are we created in God's image, but the fact of where we're seated and where the devil's not, where he used to be, now he's no longer. To know that all he wants to do is try to get us away from that position. Because once we get away from that position, we're doing things on our own. And you know the Bible says that without without Christ. We're nothing. Without God, we're nothing. We can do nothing. We have nothing. And so the enemy is always trying to get us out of the position of faith, out of the position of being in Christ, because in Christ we can do all things. In Christ we have all things. And, um, you know, as Cammie was talking about, 
the, the pressures. Um, there's this job that's been going on that I that I had that I tried to get it done in January. And then I tried to get it in February. And and the these customers said, no, no, we don't want it now, we don't want it now, and then all of a sudden, when can you do it? And I said, I'm ready. Oh, we don't want you to do it now. And then uh, they want it done while I'm gone. Okay? And I said, you know, once we get into March, you're looking at weather, it's like Russian roulette with the weather. So this past Monday, because I was still in Norway, this is when everything just busted loose. I mean, the pressures come on. They, uh, my guys start texting me, this is what they're saying, this is what's going on, they want it done, and I, I mean, the pressures came on thick. And I remember thinking, I trust God. God's always gotten me out of situations, he's always helped me. And, you know, you know the enemy lies, you know, he, he cannot tell the truth even if he wanted to, even if he tried to tell the truth, he couldn't. <laughs> So everything he says is a lie, and, and the Lord showed me years ago, if I know it's a devil saying something, then just believe the opposite because the opposite is true. You know when he says that God doesn't love you? Well, God does love you. You're not going to make it. I am going to make it. You're not going to be healed. I've already been. So he wants me to try to get in the, the now rather than what I received 2,000 years ago through Christ, right? So... He said, this is what's going to happen, your business relationship, and I mean, all these lies start coming, and I realized, you know what, I'm not going to believe this, but the pressure is real. And uh, so, yes, no, Friday, I went and I talked, I was going to go talk to the one of the guys that was bringing the pressure my way, and the Lord says, no, go talk to this person, because this person is the, the more important one as far as I talk to him. When I went, this guy said, when I found out that you wanted to get it done in January and February, I knew that you were on our side and you're trying to make things go easier. He goes, so don't even worry about anything. And every ounce of pressure that was left that was trying to remain was just gone because it was this guy the whole time. I couldn't get in contact with this guy, but this guy the whole time knew my heart. He knew what I tried to do, and he knew whose fault it was and was not putting any blame on me. And I just, when I left, I kind of started chuckling because it's like, the devil is so stupid. You know, but he tries to put everything, all the pressure, all the weight. And it's just to get us out of the position of faith, out of the position of love. And, and to get into doing works in the wrong motive, with the wrong heart behind it. And trying to worry when knowing Jesus says, don't worry. So many times is it in, in Matthew 6, right? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, but seek. Therefore, don't worry. And when we step back and look at it, if we're in the right position, there's absolutely no need to worry. But if we're out of that position, then worry becomes the stepping stone. Because now it becomes... How can I? How am I going to? How is this going to happen? I don't know how this is going to happen. This is too much. And the whole time God is saying, you know, he, he's that one person on the court. Pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. Give me the ball. <laughs> give me the ball. Just give me a chance. And no, no, no. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know. You, you know people treat God like that. When he's like, I'll do the game winning shot. Just give it to me. We're down by 30 points, but when I shoot it, we're going to win. Because <laughs> I multiply, right? <laughs> so, regardless of how far behind we are, just give me the ball. And, you know, even if we're down by 100 points, yeah. my touchdown counts. Yeah. Sure. And if we trust God like that, you know, not that He cheats, <laughs> but He created this whole thing. So He sees things that we don't. And in that position, it, it, that's why I always ask myself questions. Why did God put me here? Out of every place. And then out of the entire world, He could have had me move. Why Oklahoma? You know, anywhere to be seated, why seated in Christ at the right hand? Any kind of helper, why did He give me this kind of helper? And if you, if you think about that, not questioning God like, you know what you're doing, but there's a purpose, so I want to know why. I don't have to understand everything. I just want to know this much. I believe life becomes so much easier. So much easier. 
You know, and, and I heard Jerry Savelle, Jerry Savelle say this morning, if we're like what Brother Hagin does, just act as, as though the Bible is true. You know, I don't know everything, but this is what God said, and that's more, more, more than enough for me. You know, I, I shared this in Norway, and then I'll be done with this. We believe in a cross we've never seen, in a Jesus we've never seen with our own eyes, unless he appeared to you in a vision, which he may have. We've never seen the stripes on his back. We've never seen the nails in his hand, you know, the holes in his feet. We've never seen the gash in his side. We've never seen him carry the cross. We've never seen hell. We've never seen heaven. But we put our eternal salvation, we, we put everything into what these words say according to Romans 10 and a few other verses. So what's so different between Romans 10 and Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, 1 Corinthians? What's so different from Hebrews and all this when it says this is who you are? This is what you have. And the only reason why the Bible could say this is who you are, this is what you have, and this is where you are is because of the cross we've never seen. The man we've never seen crawl on the cross. So I, I think it's kind of interesting that we'll put our faith in salvation. What was that? Did you hear that? That <laughs> 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 was not me. <laughs> I was like a dough bleat, you know? A little grunt. <laughs> So, I would say that we put our faith in that. But everything else in the Bible is because of what He did. We can only be seated because He was raised. If we believe He was raised, then we need to believe that we're seated. And because He was raised from the dead, seated at the right hand, after He presented His blood, that's when the Scripture says, just as He is, so are we now in this world. Now, I can promise you Jesus is not broke, sick, crying, worried, Frustrated, he's not full of anxiety and pressure, but he's happy, he's joyful, he's at peace, and he's listening to the Father, still yet, and he's still making intercession for us. You know, and um, one thing that Kim said about the, the comforter, or the helper, another word is comforter, and one day I was talking to somebody and they kept on saying, that's out of my comfort zone, that's out of my comfort zone, that's out of my, and it kept on just, Standing out like it was highlighted. And I'm like, Lord, why? Why was, why was that sticking out to me? And he asked me, he says, what is the Holy Ghost to you? And I said, well, he's my helper. He's my standby. He's my comforter. And I realized, okay, he's my comforter. And the Lord showed me, he says, wherever the comforter says to go and whatever he says to you, that is your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. If he says to go here and you say, no, that's out of my comfort zone, that's not true. Because when the comforter says, go here, that becomes my comfort zone. In him is my comfort zone. Wherever he says. Anything outside of that is flat out flesh and sin. And <laughs> we don't want to be in that area. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. I could keep on going for next week Monday. No. 